Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel and the 10th episode of SDS Rotary Hammers, right? Can you believe it? We've been doing this series for about 10 episodes already. I didn't even realize we had that many SDS Rotary Hammers. But to be fair, we didn't have that many. We actually acquired a few and this one being one of them. So, you know, without too much further ado, let's get into it, right? So this right here is Milwaukee's M18 Fuel brushless a one inch SDS plus rotary hammer, right? We have to point all that out, right? Because Milwaukee has a lot of SDS rotary hammers, some of them being corded, some of them being M18, some of them not being M18, but in the M18, they have M18, then they have M18 brushless, and then they have fuel brushless, right? So this one right here is the fuel brushless model, which is their top tier model of SDS rotary hammers in the M18 lineup. So, uh, you know, this one packs all the features, bells and whistles, lights, uh, E-clutch, auto stop, all that kind of stuff, right? So this one is obviously the drop motor style and is rated for up to one inch. Okay, and the rating system is kind of different across all manufacturers. They just kind of, you know, c come out with numbers in a way of marketing and try to figure out what it can really handle. But what we really want to find out is what does the performance look like? And that's usually what we do on these episodes. So if you want to know more about this tool, stick with us. This right here is M18 Fuel 1 inch STS Plus rotary hammer and it is the next generation of cordless rotary hammers and to designed to deliver the ultimate job site performance and productivity. It is the fastest 1 inch STS rotary hammer drill in its class and when paired with the high output XC batteries. It is designed for heavy duty ultimate applications. It has a brushless motor that delivers up to two foot pounds of impact energy, 1,330 RPM and 4,800 BPM. It is designed for the most demanding applications. It is equipped with the Redlink Lithium uh, Intelligence Tool Plus, which is pretty much all M18 tools do that. And when paired with the high output battery, it delivers 50% more power while running 50% cooler than other M18 batteries, okay? And this tool is equipped with auto stop for kickback control and AVS, which is anti-vibration system for user comfort. It has three modes, which is rotary hammer mode, hammer mode, and rotary mode. This tool weighs a whopping 6.8 pounds. This right here is obviously a left-hand part of the tool, and since there's a lot to talk about, let's talk. start with the front, all right? So this right here is the uh, SDS Plus truck. It's a pretty standard truck, twist, insert, lock. It's pretty much done, you know, no issues. You pull back on this collar, pull the bit out, no issues. This handle right here, which has Milwaukee all over it, here, here, and on the other side, it's a, actually got it in three places, I guess, but, um, it's, it's pretty much all plastic, right? It's part tool plastic, so you got no issues to worry about. It's kept on the tool using this metal cintering. So as you twist the handle and tighten it down, you know, it pretty much stays into place. This handle, ha or this tool has a lip right here where it connects, so it doesn't easily just fall out. But if you did want to take it out, you just have to loosen the handle, you know, good enough that it makes this ring large enough that you can pull it out, okay? Uh, this part right here is where the depth rod system is. And as we talked about in the previous episode, it's an interesting depth rod system because it's kind of like a lever type system instead of like a push button type system. So, you know, just something to point out, not that too many people are gonna care about it. It does come with a depth rod. I don't know where ours is, but it does come right there. And that's pretty much how you would use it to adjust the depth rod, okay? So enough about the front. Um, actually, let's talk about this LED light here on the front. So on the front, there's also an LED light that does stay on, right? So in, when you activate, tool stays on for a little bit. And I would say uh, the LED lights on the drop motor style are a little bit better because the light is actually closer to the place that you're working. So, you know, that does help instead of being, you know, almost like two feet back here where you can't really get too much visibility um, on a D handle style. So, you know, that does help. So moving around to the left side here of the tool, it has three modes, okay? It has a hammer drill mode, or a hammer drill mode, a drill mode, and a hammer mode, the chipping mode. And it's it's a pretty standard way of, of selecting it, right? You can pretty much push down on this and you can select to where you want to get it to. Uh, one thing I will go ahead and say right now is that we have not had this tool for very long. And I want to say on two, maybe even three occasions, we've had issues getting this tool into chipping mode only, or actually even varial lock mode. Um, and I don't want to say it's because it's kind of new-ish or whatnot, um, because we have used it to drill several holes and we've uh, encountered it several times already. So, you know, maybe it's a thing, maybe it's not. But for some reason, when you want to try to get to here, right? Like right now, as you can see right here, we're pressing on it with the button pressed down. It will not go into that mode, 
right? So you can't even get it to chipping mode only. So when you encounter it again, right? Just like that, watch. It goes like this, easy, no problem. But when you encounter it, you just can't get there. So the way we've been getting around that is you just activate the tool a little bit, right? Just let it move. And then you can kind of get it there. Sometimes it kind of unlocks it, right? Sometimes it doesn't. Like in this case, it still hasn't unlocked the ability to do that. That's interesting because last couple of times we ran into it, we just ran it a little bit and it didn't have that problem. Here, let's run it a little bit, right? See, now we can actually get it to hammer mode, right? No problem. But it does happen, I wanna say, quite often now, because as you just saw, that's probably like the third or fourth time, one additional time, and you can see this tool has not been used heavily. It's just a, an issue, right? So even again, look right now, press that, press on the button, and you turn it, it just cannot turn. It will not turn to that mode. So like I said, if you have that issue, just run it, you know, a couple times full speed, and then sometimes, you can get it there. Maybe you can't. Let's try it again. Right? Or maybe, you know, you press pressure on it as you run the tool and it allows you to switch over there. So, you know, that's an interesting thing. You know, you don't really see that happen too often. I've seen it happen maybe on like one or two other tools, but it's rare on those tools. But on this tool, for some reason, it happens a lot more than every other tool that we've seen so far. So make sure you keep that in mind. Okay? So moving on from that. Little hole for some air circulation here. Obviously, Milwaukee Fuel tool, they're gonna have Milwaukee and Fuel written all over it since it is primarily like their top flagship uh, tool. And right here, AVS, which means anti-vibration system, which is a spring-loaded action they kind of got going in on here, just helps reduce the vibration. All this black stuff here, drove over overmold that's got a one-finger trigger. So even if you're doing long jobs or big holes or you know, like using this thing long-term, make sure you keep that in mind because it's not two fingers. Some people prefer that, some people prefer the other. So, you know, whatever works for you, right? So, for reverse switch, pretty standard. No issues with that so far we've seen. Uh, we didn't notice one important detail right here, which is the metal things that look right here. At first, we thought it may be an LED, but that would be a really weird place to put it. It's actually like the metal bar they put inside of the battery slide part. You can go look at that later, which kind of helps the durability of this tool because there's a lot of shaking and vibration here. So, they did reinforce, uh, you know, the area where the battery slides are, okay? Uh, on the back side, pretty much nothing going in on here. Pretty standard. On the other side the right side pretty much nothing going in on here it's impressive that they didn't put like Milwaukee fuel all over this place because you know usually they do that kind of stuff on the top part it will say m18 it won't say fuel or brushless but it will say m18 just so that you know you're using an m18 tool right like i said nothing too much going in up in here if you want to look at the back part right here it has uh you know it's pretty heavily reinforced as you can see here it's a power tool plastic where they have the slide mechanisms and if you look really closely you can kind of see the uh, metal insert that they have right there that is uh, reinforcing the metal slide so that you know it holds up in terms of durability okay so as we looked at on here let's move this to uh, drill mode only and let's check out this variable speed trigger check this out as you can see it has a little bit of a break if you want to check out the hammer drill right check this out Right, uh, breaks pretty quickly, ramps up pretty quickly, no issues. Uh, this tool seems to work really well most of the time. And usually when we use it, you know, we don't have any issues with it. It actually feels really nice and powerful when we are using it. So it seems to be a great tool, okay? One thing uh, before we move on to performance testing is this top front part right here. As you can see right here, just in case you forgot your tool was fuel brushless, because you didn't see it right there, you know, it'll tell you right there again. And there's a little LED light here that pops up and this auto stop function is what really happens there. So when you're running it and you twist it, like you run into rebar or you run into some type of resistance and it twists, it will cut the power out uh, to the tool to help prevent, you know, wrist lockup or wrist damage or damage to the user in some way, right? And that little light will come on telling you that it's been activated, okay? So uh, it's a nice feature to have. Um, you know, it's always good to be safe. So, you know, that's what you get with the tool. Let's get into testing it.
All right, I hope y'all caught those numbers because those numbers went by pretty quick. Well, at least it felt like it went by pretty quick, right? So let's go take a look at the recap, all right? So we ran this 2912-20 uh, tool with a fully charged high output eight amp hour battery. And to remind you, when you buy it as a kit, it comes with the high output XC 6.0 battery, but this is an 8.0 battery, all right? So uh, runtime or uh, performance test, first run 18.43 seconds, second run 18.28 seconds, third run 17.98 seconds, taking an average of the three runs comes in at 18.23 seconds, okay? This is obviously an SDS plus tool. The impact force of this tool is two foot pounds and no load BPM is 20 or, or 4,800 and no load RPM is 1,330 RPM, right? And as we always talk about in the tools with the work done per minute where you calculate the impact force and the BPM is comes out to about 9,600 and this tool, remember, weighs a whopping 6.8 pounds, okay? And just in case you're wondering uh, if there's a death suggestion kit uh, available for it, there is. And if you wanted to get that, the model number on that one is 2912 dash de all right so uh with that being said where does the tool rank on the leaderboard let's go take a look so with the total score of or performance score of 18.23 it ranks currently in fourth place on the leaderboard right behind the dewalt dch273 but right in front of the bosch gbh 18 v 26 d which is the d handle okay so we're literally splitting hairs here just kidding, can't literally split these hairs on this episode, but we're talking about rounding errors here, or you know, just errors of marginal, marginal error, whatever you wanna call them, right? So uh, this tool is 18.23 total performance score, and the DeWalt is 17.59, whereas the Bosch is 18.25, right? So there's not a huge amount of difference, and as we say in pretty much all of these episodes, the performance numbers are just performance numbers, right? You gotta buy the tool based on what you need, what suits your needs and what platforms you have and stuff like that. So this is here just to, you know, see how the tools really compare to each other, all right? So let's go take a look at some of the numbers, right? So this tool has uh, what they call, claim on their website at least to be two foot pounds of impact force, okay? The DeWalt DCH273 has 1.5, uh, foot pounds of impact force and the Bosch right under it has 1.9. 1.9 and 2 is fairly close enough. You could argue 1.5 is far enough from, you know, 2. But if you go take a look at the numbers here, as we always say, these numbers are almost always no load. So everything always changes when you put it under load as everybody pretty much understands these days. So, you know, the numbers are for what it is. Okay. So, uh, one thing that we will point out um, on this, as we usually point out on, on all these episodes, or at least some of these episodes, is that even on this tool, the more number of runs that we make, like further number of runs that we make, the faster the tool seems to be. And we talked about this already, is that maybe, we don't know why that is, maybe the tool seems to warm up or, you know, or whatnot. But the thing I wanted to point out on this episode is that, yes, that is true in this case, but in this case, the runs, or the groupings of performance testing or each run is actually closer, right? So let's take a look at the uh, one right in front of it, the DeWalt, right? 273, it was 19.5 on the first, and then on run three, it was 16.6, .6, and on the Bosch, it was 19.8, and this one was pretty much, or run three was 17.07. .07. So on this one, it was really close because 18.43 and 17.98 are really close to each other. So that is something to point out, you know, um, if you're only drilling like one or two holes, it may or may not be important to you, but you know, just something to know, okay? So what can we say about this tool, right? <laughs> So uh, this is obviously a great tool, right? Except for the one issue with switching between modes right now. So if you're switching between modes all the time because you know you are drilling and then driving with this one tool, which most people are probably not, then that's probably going to be an issue you need to consider, right? But if you're only staying in one mode, which most people usually do a lot, like if you're just drilling all the time or you're just using it for chipping a big project, you don't need to worry about the issue with the, um, um, changing the modes, right? But like I said, if you're just drilling and driving with this thing, you may need to worry about it. Who knows? I don't really know why you would switch to hammer mode all the time. You know, that's something to think about, but you know, just keep note of that, all right? Would I go out and buy this tool again? Yeah, I'll probably go out and buy this tool again if I needed it, mainly because it, when you're using it, the user feedback is that you feel a lot of power, right? There is vibration dampening system, stuff like that into it. But the thing you feel when you're using it, it feels like you just have a lot of raw power. And that may be good. Some people may like that. Some people may 
may not, right? So that is a thing that you have to decide for yourself. But like I said, would I go buy it again? Probably, I would definitely uh, think about buying it again, but most likely I would not, mainly because of this one issue here, right? And when you're doing a bunch of work, especially in the heat or the sun, this every issue you run into is just like frustrating, right? So that may be something to think about, but like I said, you need to figure out if it works for you. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let us know, get back to work, and we'll see you guys next time.